Hello guys, welcome back to Simple Abyss for Living. This is Rami and today I'm bringing you a recipe for soft roti, just like how we make it back home in Fiji. This is such a great recipe for very soft, supple rotis that don't get hard over time. They're delicious and you're going to love them. So let me show you how I make it. I'm using all-purpose flour for this, which is just regular flour. You're welcome to use um, whole wheat flour if you'd like, um, but as I was growing up, we always used all-purpose flour. I'm using two cups of all-purpose flour. You can sift it if you'd like, um, or you can just aerate the flour before you scoop it out. You're also going to need some oil. I'm using avocado oil. Any neutral oil is fine. I'm also adding a little bit of salt and I am using hot water. This is not boiling water, but it is steaming. You wanna make sure you use hot water for this. This is what makes it supple and soft. Now, as always, when you're making any dough, you don't want to add all the water in at once. So I start off by using quarter cup increments and just mixing the dough with a wooden spoon. You can use a rubber spatula as well. Um, the dough is going to be very hot because we are using hot water, um, so be careful. Um, but as you mix it, um, you will see that the dough will start coming together. If it seems a little dry, add a little bit more water. But the dough should not look extremely wet at this point because you can't really feel the dough. As you're mixing it, the dough is going to cool down a little bit and that's when you want to go in with your hands and test the dough. Now, if you are not used to um, kneading dough by hand, this might be a little challenging for you, so let the dough cool down. Don't add any more water if you feel like it's going to be too much water. Um, just let the dough cool down a little bit so you can handle it and go in with your hands and get a feel for the dough to make sure that it's coming together and it's not too hard. If you do need to add additional water to the dough, um, please be very careful. Use a spoon if necessary um, to bring the dough together. You can always let it cool down more before you go on to knead it. Now, when I'm kneading the dough, I like to add in a couple of teaspoons of neutral oil on top of the dough and then I just knead it um, using the technique shown for about three to four minutes. Once um, that's done, I'll go ahead and cover it with just like a little layer of oil. This is um, just to stop it from forming a skin. And then I cover it with the tea towel and I let it rest for about 10 to 15 minutes. This part is very, very important. If you do not let the dough rest, it will not roll out properly. It will not puff, puff up properly. So very important step. After 15 minutes of rest time, we're going to go ahead and divide the dough into equal um, parts. Um, I make about 10 rotis with two cups of flour. You can make more or less, it's up to you. I like to use a, a, um, a little bend scraper to divide it. You can just tear them apart with your hands. Now in Fiji, we make them into little balls called loyes. Um, so you divide the dough into equal parts and then you kind of roll it out to make sure that the seam, the little fold parts at the bottom, and then you flatten it out to a disc and I like to store all my discs on the side, all the loyas, while I roll it out. Um, you're going to need some extra flour for dusting. Um, pretty much every household in Fiji or anyone that makes roti, they have like this little tub of um, dry uh, flour, loose all-purpose flour. Um, we're going to dust the loya and then we're just going to roll it out. I am going to give you a few pointers to try to make you help you to um, make it round, but honestly, it doesn't matter the the shape of the roti. If you can't make it round, only practice is going to make it better. Um, so just keep practicing. Uh, you know, do it with a light hand. You don't need to be too hard, and you don't have to press down too hard. But just keep practicing. Once you're done rolling out all your rotis, you want to go ahead and warm up your tawa. I like to warm up a tawa while I'm rolling out a few rotis. Uh, once the tawa is warm, you can go ahead and oil it. Today I'm using my dad's tawa um, and uh, it does need to be oiled occasionally. You can use any cast iron pan. Once you place the roti on a warm tawa, you want to keep the heat at medium. Uh, once you start seeing a few bubbles or um, pockets of steam, you can go ahead and flip it with a spatula or you can use your hand, whichever you prefer. And then we're going to go ahead and oil this side. I am using ghee today. You can use any neutral oil. You can use melted butter. 
and then you're gonna flip it again. Now, as you can see, there's some brown spots developing. We're gonna go ahead and oil this side as well. Wait a few seconds. Um, I like to use my spatula to kind of just give a little gentle press and then um, on the other side you'll see bigger brown spots and then you're going to go ahead and flip that and then you can peek down below and if it's you know brown to your liking um, then you can go ahead and remove it from the flame. I like to store my roti in a roti holder. Here you're just seeing on a plate. Um, but I have a warm roti holder and I use a tea towel, a clean tea towel, to store them. As you can see, these rotis are really soft. They hold together really well. Um, you can make them, you know, in the morning. It's great for um, lunch boxes or, you know, kids' tiffins. And they are uh, taste amazing. I do hope you give this recipe a try. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me down below or anywhere on my social media. I would love to connect with all of you. Until next time, please take care and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye.